Sebastian. I'm here today with Roman from Tornado Cash, and we're today sitting in person again, which is a very special occasion these days. And we're sitting here at Denver. It's East Denver times, and I'm very happy to welcome you all to Web3 Talks. Today is a topic that is very dear to myself and a lot of people here, which is privacy. So, hi Roman, nice to have you here. Let's hear about you. Like, what are you doing with Tornado? Not everybody is familiar with it, so let's start with a general overview of what you're trying to achieve with Tornado. Yeah, sure. So, basically, Tornado Cache is a privacy protocol, non custodial privacy protocol for EVM compatible chains. Um, it allows people to break the link between deposit and withdrawal. Uh, transactions with the ability to with a, something co that, that we also have compliance tool that allows people to verify their origin of funds even though you let use another cash if let's say some third party wants to verify your uh, your or origin of funds um, there is a there is a way to do it with another cash uh, to prove cryptographically that your initial deposit was f made from legitimate address. Okay, cool. So basically, it's a tool that allows me to unlink one account that has ETH to another one. And it's like for ETH or what What or sort of assets can you, can you use there? Yeah, so um, there are two products right now that's called Ternada Cash Classic, original version, and the, the newer version is called Ternada Cash Nova. Uh, Tarnana Cash Classic uh, supports a uh, native currency of EVM chain, for example, like Ethereum, or if it's a Binance chain, BNB, or Avalanche is AvaX, or if it's a Gnosis chain, it's a XDAI native token. And also it supports ERC20 tokens like DAI, USDC, USDT, or any sort of ERC20 token. So you can uh, privatize um, native currency of EVM chain and any ERC-20 token. Okay, so that's really useful, not just for ETH holders and on many chains. So for people who want to use that, like what are some, maybe some things that some of the people who are interested in using Tornado, like what should you be aware of? Like, for example, there's people who deposit into that, so can I immediately withdraw it because I want to have my ETH or? But actually, yeah, so I mean, there are some rules, like like just general rules in privacy protocols, not not only to Tornado Cash, but any privacy. It's something called anonymity set. Uh, basically, what it is, it's it's a number of how many participants um, deposited into the pool. Um, so the the to achieve higher privacy, um, it's better to have higher anonymity set. Also, when you deposit, you, you, when you make your transaction, it's best to like wait some time, like to have even more deposits on top of it, uh, so you can have better privacy. Um, however, yes, I mean, if there is already big anonymity set, you can potentially uh, deposit and withdraw at the same time, but it, like some analytic, tool, analytic tools can uh, predict that it could be your like the same identity who did that um, especially if let's say if the latest deposit was made like a few hours ago and you just deposited and withdraw people can suspect that it might be the same person but again like it or it could be not yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay so speaking about analytics tools, uh, you also recently announced an analytics tool that allows users to kind of find out if you know their addresses might be linked. Can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that? So we actually didn't build it. It was purely made by a third party community people that um, they, they, they like Tornado Cash and anybody is actually can contribute to Tornado Cash and you can, you, anybody can build on top of Tradanda Cash because everything is open sourced and uh, anybody is welcome to read and like understand how it works and figure out some other cool ideas that could be made of. So for example that team uh, they built a product I think called Tutela. It allows people f uh, to um, to see their like they build something called like anonymity score like what is your anonymity score like if you um, 
if you like revealed some of your privacy using using some uh, techniques that you may be not aware of or you just didn't notice or you did something so yeah so people can just put their address and it would show them that yeah. there's an issue you put the address and it can show like uh, like if you used an anonymity mining program yeah. if you reuse the same address if you um, reveal some other tracks okay yeah. cool and uh, where can people find this tool I think it's a, the, there is a website I think to tell that XYZ okay like we'll this. provide the link with the with the video yeah mm -hmm. cool all right, and uh, so yeah, there's this analytics tool, and you mentioned also the compliance tool. Like, can yeah. you can you walk us a little bit more through, mm -hmm. like, in what cases would I need that? Because I thought like I would use Tornado for privacy. What is this? What is this compliance tool? So for? Um, uh, there is a big misconception, like that people in general have that there are some mixers, and there are privacy protocols. Those are two different things. So in my opinion. Mixers are the ones that most likely custodials. Mm -hmm. They usually operate like in BTC, uh, Bitcoin uh, chains, and what they, the way they work, or, or maybe there are some um, non-custodials like Wasabi and Samurai. Uh, I'm not sure if they have like a, some sort of like proof of verification of funds, but in my in my understanding that once you, I think they do, but never mind. So like the mixers, basically a lot of mixers, they just provide mixing services and there is no way for you to prove which address you used initially to deposit into yeah. that mixer. So that basically means you cannot prove yourself that your funds were legitimate prior using the mixer. Privacy protocols, a lot of them have something called like viewing key, like in Zcash or in Tornado Cash, it's basically your private note that after usage of Tornado Cash, you can go to Compliance Tool, put your note in, it will review your privacy. For example, if some third party like centralized exchange, let's say I use Tornado Cash, then I deposit into like uh, centralized exchange, and the centralized exchange, they um, are required to comply with uh, anti-money laundering rules. So they would have to ask you, what is your, like, where you uh, funds came from, and uh, you can submit, provide them their report to sh review your privacy and review your deposit address. That's cool. That's very cool. Okay. And so there's there's a bunch of things that you that you mentioned already on the um, on the new version of of Tornado mm -hmm. Cash. Uh, so tell us a little bit what's the future. So uh, with the Tornado Cash Classic, there were a few uh, issues. So as a first version, it had a fixed uh, uh, pool sizes. For example, if you wanna privatize Ether, uh, you only have a, like a choice of either depositing 0.1 Ether or one Ether or 10 Ether. So if you have like three Ether, you would have to make three separate deposits, which is not very convenient. Second issue was that once you deposit, you cannot transfer ownership of your node to somebody else without leaving the smart contract yeah and the third and that's expensive right yeah so I think it's the thing also is it's also very uh gas uh ga it's called it costs a lot of gas to use the Tornado cash core six so the network fees on ethereum could be significant mm -hmm. uh so with Tornado cash nova uh, some of those problems were solved by first of all you can deposit any arbitrary amount mm -hmm. of ether that's first second it utilizes a layer two solution, which is a Gnosis chain, for enabling much cheaper transactions and faster execution time. Um, also, it allows people to initiate uh, shielded transfers. So imagine like you can deposit from your address and then you can spend any amount of your deposit to anybody else without leaving uh, Tornado Cash Nova. So you don't have to like exit on a layer one. That's really cool. So you're basically bringing some of the features of like a privacy coin to Ethereum effectively, right? Because things like that Zcash, for example, has as a dedicated chain, we can now use through the new version of Tornado on Ethereum. 
Yeah, it's basically think about is like a privacy wallet. Yeah. Uh, like you can just spend your ether to anybody privately. Okay. Cool. That's uh, that's a pretty nice pretty nice development. Um, so in all the developments that are ongoing, you mentioned already community, and there's also a Tornado DAO. You do you actually call it Tornado DAO? Yeah, it's a DAO. Uh, so basically, the way um, Tornado Cash um, has a decision-making process is through the DAO. So nobody can make decisions for Tornado for protocol upgrades or protocol releases. So it has to go through the DAO. So the DAO has to vote on any proposal. Anybody can make a proposal and it's based on the, how the DAO votes in favor or against. Um, that would be the outcome of the proposal. Okay. And then I guess it's you guys implementing that proposal or who does that? So um, anybody can do it. Okay. It's not necessarily that we write yeah. it or it's basically like, I think like uh, Ethereum I mean, where many other DAOs operate. Like, yeah. There is an open DAO, anybody can propose. I mean, yeah. I'm not sure, I cannot speak for all the DAOs, <laughs> but I'm sure yeah. there, there are the ones that actually uh, decentralized and uh, not, not centralized. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what are some of the examples of proposals that, that went through there? Okay, so for example, um, I need to brush it. Okay. When the community decided they, they want to launch the DAO and they, they airdrop some tokens to previous uh, users of Tornado. I was very grateful to be one of those, <laughs> by the way. And, uh, and for example, the transferability of those tokens were, not, were disabled. So mm -hmm. the DAO, the first proposal was the DAO voted to enable transfers so they can, uh, I don't know, like uh, exchange tokens between each other. Mm -hmm. um, other proposals. So from the start, basically, your DAO was like decentralized, and therefore also the token governance was decentralized from the DAO. Yep. I liked it a lot. Like we had a similar launch at Hopper, so I, I like this, you know, decentralization of governance from the beginning. Very cool. Yeah. Um, other proposals was like um, anonymity mining tools, mm -hmm. like so they um, like updated some of the um, core infrastructure, like technical stuff, like to improve how the anonymity mining work. And there are some just other like community proposals, like let's say if there is a, uh, some people, they, they feel they can contribute to it, they uh, ask from the, DAO has some torn tokens in treasury, and some people ask from DAO like, like if they wanna contribute to it, and they ask for some uh, tokens, and they provide some. Uh, okay services I think. Cool, okay, is the um, anonymity mining you call it, is that still live? Uh, no, uh, I think it's ended in December. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it, it was the way for the DAO to also like the first like initial stage of distribution was through airdrop yeah. and then they launched anonymity mining so people can um, earn some anonymity mining rewards when people use another cash and yeah. Okay. Cool. Now, so I think we, we have a good understanding what Tornado is. Let's like zoom out a little bit. So um, why do you think a privacy solution like Tornado, like why is it important for Ethereum in the bigger picture? Like, you know, why, why bother, right? Like many people are, are asking, asking that, like, why bother? Um, from technical perspective, it's basically, it's just kind of, it's a big wish for us was that we really like what Zcash has made for the ecosystem, what technology they built. And then the Ethereum community also pre-made it uh, for any Ethereum developers to build on top of zero knowledge proof. So the uh, Go Ethereum clients and other clients, they have made some pre-compiles for ZK snarks. Um, and it was like, okay, why nobody is just trying to build what has already been done by Zcash on top of Ethereum? So to bring this functionality for Ethereum users, I think that was the yeah. initial goal. Okay, cool. So um, do you see, when, when we think a little bit more into the future, like how do you see Tornado being used? Is it going to be a feature? Is it going to be a dApp 
is it going to be something that as infrastructure is embedded in wallets? How, how do you see it in the future that this plays out? I see Tagnata Cash as a protocol. Like it's as, as with any protocol, any can, anybody can build any other dApps on top of this protocol. Uh, there could be many more other clients, wallets, dApps, like anything. Yeah. So that's how I see the future of Tagnata Cash. It can just keep evolving, evolving and improving itself. And let's say like today we're using one pro proving system and maybe to tomorrow like, like Aztec team, they, you, they build Plong, uh, which is really nice and cool technology. And maybe in the future, Tornado Cash can also uh, improve itself using more modern uh, zero knowledge proof systems. Okay, so in this in this wider Ethereum ecosystem, we now have the ability to make private uh, transfers happen. So, like, what if something goes wrong? Like, can I, you know, call Roman and say, you know, I don't know, I, I sent it to the wrong address. Please get it out. Like, how do you deal with that? Unfortunately, there is no ability for anyone to uh, prevent such scenarios. It's because the nature of Tornado Cash is built up on fully uh, immutable contracts. The core technology is immutable, decentralized, and permissionless. So there is, there is no one in the world that can stop this con smart contract unless if somebody has a way to stop Ethereum network. That's actually great. So I mean, I think what this is, this is maybe if you're new to this, it, it might seem weird, right? So why does Roman, you know, not have the ability to, to press the magic big master button and say, hey, you know, revert. But I think this is the very important thing if, as you say, it's to be used as infrastructure to have it trustless, right? Immutability is one foundational element of trustlessness. Uh, yeah, but however, I have to mention that uh, so the, the when, when the core functionality is immutable, like uh, the DAO can build some modules on top of that that could be upgradable. Okay. But they will not necessarily compromise the like or touch any kind of funds or like they can just build some extensions on top of this protocol all around. That's what the DAO is for. Okay. What sort of extensions would you love to see? You're not telling the DAO what to do, but like, what is something on, on your wish list? You know, if there was, you know, arbitrary manpower, arbitrary decision making power, what what would be some ideas of stuff that we could build? I think uh, other protocol developers from other DeFi protocols they could think about some other pretty cool use cases, mm -hmm. how they can actually integrate with a protocol or maybe provide some their utility to the protocol. So. I'm not even sure what's possible, but I'm pretty sure there are a lot of other cool stuff that could be built on top of it and some other extensions uh, that could be proposed to have it in a Tornado ecosystem. Okay, cool. So we talked about on-chain privacy. Um, now, as I'm obviously also interested in off-chain privacy, I noticed that on your website you're talking about Tor, right? So. Tell us, like, why why is that needed? Why do people need privacy, off-chain privacy solutions to interface Tornado? Yeah, so I wouldn't call our like we we can't basically say we're experts on off-chain privacy. That's not what we uh, try to uh, build. Uh, we the team and the community is right now the Tornado is only focused on on-chain privacy. So for the off-chain, it was just like a suggestions that, by the way, there is some metadata that could be also collected for, for from like third-party services like uh, RPC providers or gas price oracles or any other network request that you are making from your client. The client means like web browser or anything else. Uh, all this information could be tracked and it could review your privacy by using off-chain metadata. So the Tornado is not focused on that. It was just basically um, suggestions say, hey, there, there are some tools that can help with this, like Hopper or like, <laughs> um, there are some people who like to use VPNs, like proxies, Tor or whatever in between. So like, I'm, I'm not an expert on that, but it's just something that people should be aware of. Yeah. 
yeah, I think it also shows how you know the Web three ecosystem needs to work together to you know ensure the privacy and security of the whole stack. That's cool. Now, if we're thinking about this Web three stack a little bit uh, again, very very broadly, looking into the future, um, how do you see this end game of this Web three world? Like, how does it look like if we think about Web two providers versus Web three? Is it going to be like a completely new world? Is it like you know, is is it just going to integrate? Is Web two just going to integrate elements of Web three or vice versa? How do you see the Web three playing out? Let's say on a ten year time horizon. I think there are like two camps right now in the Web three community. The one is proposing that we should be more resilient to um, censorship, and the other camp pushes for more like um, regulatory regulative type of style of Web3 technology. So we cannot speculate who's going to win, what's going to happen. I think it's going to be some mix. There will be some uh, censorship resistant protocols. There will be some compliant uh, protocols. Like I recently saw a very funny screenshot, screenshot of MetaMask when you're sending die and it's like a, hey by the way please provide your KYC before you send your <laughs> die token that was really funny uh, tweet but I can totally see it could happen in the future that some tokens can integrate uh, KYC into their tokens into their protocol so you cannot use a protocol unless you KYC yourself um, tot could be totally happen I'm not sure if it's What's what's better for our world? Um, I don't have any uh, like uh, how would you say it um, totalitarian views like oh it should be just this side or that side. No, I'm I I like to just uh, write software. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. That's all. Like we don't want to run any services. We don't want to make any opinions. We just want to write code. That's great. And that code is, I think, one of the most actively used privacy infrastructure on top of Ethereum right now. And as you mentioned, a bunch of a bunch of other chains that you that you see out there, right? So um, maybe as a as as a like last question for you know people who wanna develop something with Tornado Cash, integrate something, like what is uh, where where do people go? What should people do? Like how do I get exposure to the Tornado ecosystem if I wanna if I wanna get involved? So if you are a developer and you have some technical background, I think you can greatly help Tornado ecosystem by uh, first of all like understanding how it works. Um, you like let's say so there are a few like different types of developers, for example like researchers that could build some hardcore stuff and can come up with some better. Uh, proposal for the core infrastructure. There are developers who want to just be, be on a higher level, like building maybe some new type of wallets or um, new type of tools that could help users use Tornado Cash. There are some, uh, could be some optimizations made, uh, made for Tornado Cash. For example, everything is stored on chain and uh, the clients have to utilize some tools like caching of like some data from blockchain to put it in a client because if you try to like download like one million like events from RPC mm -hmm. server it's gonna take so much time so you mm -hmm. have to like cache something or utilize some graph protocol that is also trying to help with this. Uh, so yeah, we had Tegan on here uh, yeah. in previous time so I think it's a great protocol. It graph, helps a lot of I think there is no, uh, not there is no like there are so few devs that are not using graph protocol if they rely extensively on on-chain data. Um, so, so if you're that type of developer, you can benefit to try. Or if maybe you have some new crazy idea or not crazy, uh, what could be uh, uh, integrated with Tornado Cash, uh, anybody is welcome. That's great. That's great to hear. I think that's one of the properties of Web three. Anybody is welcome. Yep. So, last question, you had a very successful software career already before Web3. What would you tell to people who are looking at this Web3 space and are considering getting involved and considering getting in? 
Like, what would you tell them from your experience making this transition from the traditional software development world to this, like, you know, a little bit crazy crypto world? What would you tell them? Actually, I would want to flip it and say, like, I had a very unsuccessful Web2 career <laughs> before because, like, uh, every time I try to, like, uh, build something cool or get into a cool startup, maybe for various reasons I wasn't able to get into, like, I remember in 2015, 16, I tried to get a job at Coinbase, at 21, or some other crypto startups. Like, I don't know, it just didn't happen. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, previously I was working as a quality assurance engineer, so I didn't know how to code. I was just uh, testing software for companies, uh, doing some manual testing. Then when you start with manual testing, then you learn you can automate some stuff. So you learn automation testing, then you learn more about product then you learn how to code, then you become a software engineer, when, then you just build your experience and career. What I didn't like, that there is a lot of uh, silicon, like what I was always struggling, like how do you build a startup? Like how do people start it? What, what's the, what, what are the requirements? So I couldn't, I mean, I kind of understood it, like, okay, there is this place, Silicon Valley, people like raise money there, they talk to investors, like, and uh, I couldn't understand like how investors invest into something that doesn't exist, <laughs> like seed, seed invest, angel invest. And now I sort of get it, but at that time, like a web 2.0 type of world, it still wasn't very, very, very clear to me. Like, how do you find the investor? Like, it's mm -hmm. it happens that it's all about connections. People like some people knock on the doors pretty hard, some people don't. So, but anyway. Um, so I, I wouldn't say like I was a, had a successful Web2 career, but yeah, I tried. And with Web3, what fascinated me is uh, our Bitcoin meetups in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I think that's how it started. It, it was a completely different uh, community. So when, I, when you would go to some Web2.0 Web type of meetup or startup, everybody is like, I don't know, they're trying to hide their true self. I think in crypto community, people are more open and welcomed. Uh, it's I really like that kind of feeling that it's just here we are, and you don't need to go and uh, knock on some VC doors or something like that. You can just contribute yeah. and you can help the community. That's really great. I think that's really great. Like Web three is for everyone. In Web three, you can be yourself, and you know you just code, you build cool software, and that's what we do together. Another cool stuff that uh, actually uh, I was primarily a front-end developer uh, pre before, so I wasn't really good at building backends. When I first learned about Ethereum, I was so excited that I can build a app and I don't <laughs> need to think about server infrastructure. That's the, the that's yeah. click to me that's like, okay, now I can just be a like, kind of full stack developer. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's also an interesting take, right? So if you're a front-end dev, you only have to learn the Solidity, which, you know, happens to be very close to the JavaScript ecosystem anyway. So, you know, there is uh, not 30 years of catching up to do on like very complicated stacks. We're at the very early times of the Web3, right? Yeah, if you build like a typical Web 2.0 startup, you have to think about your server infrastructure, like load balancing, like uh, monitoring your service. Like if your server is down, your app doesn't work. With Ethereum, it's a distributed system. So you can build so many stuff. Okay, your RPC doesn't work. You can switch to another RPC. Your front end is not being hosted. You can switch to different IPFS gateway provider. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, fallbacks that could be made in development uh, that can uh, that allows people to have uh, fault tolerant systems. Yeah. Okay. Well, Web three is the the place to be. It sounds. Huh? It's very exciting place. Yeah. I would. I mean, there are still a lot of problems that. Yeah. It's the way I see it is basically, in nineties we had the internet with slow connections, slow internet. Like you cannot watch like YouTube in nineties on uh, your browser. So people were trying to solve those scalability issues. How do you make web on desktop, on computers, pretty good and fast? So they solved that. Then came up mobile market. Same problem, slow internet, nothing works. It's just terrible. Like you can't watch YouTube on your phone. 
like or download some huge files have like 3G, 4G, 5 networks. Uh, people saw that, so now we have phones with all these fast technologies, and it's all operated based on Web 2.0 technologies. Now with blockchain, same stuff. We can have now decentralized financial system, and we have scalability issues, slow transactions, very high cost, and people are working on that. That's really cool. I think it also shows that there's still a lot left to do. So you know, words to onboard more smart brains to this ecosystem to solve that for good. Yep. Roman, thank you so much for this. It's been really a pleasure to be with you here in person in Denver here today. Yeah, and thank you. Thanks for having us and thanks for listening to us and all the best. Yeah.